I think you know who we are by now, but I'm going to reintroduce myself anyway. I'm Ollie, this is Golden Mile Garage, and this is Vass. Um, we've been talking about his Renault 5 GT Turbo build on episode two. This is now episode three. It's been a while and lots of you have been asking about what's going on with everything else. It's still going ahead. Um, just we had a massive delay with the engine builders um, because we're gonna be running a lot of horsepower and we want it reliable. So it was just delay after delay. So, but in this episode three, we wanna just keep you up to date where we are now. Um, Bass has been doing 90% of the work, so it's good to see. But yeah, we're gonna show you around the car and um, yeah, basically, let you know what's going on. Where should we start, Matt? Should we start here? Yeah, we start here. Should we start, start here, okay. So, um, let the uh, viewers know where we're up to in here. So I guess, uh, as you mentioned, the engine we've been waiting because there's been a lot of work on that. So, um, a lot of customization as well on the engine block. So obviously we've got steel crank, steel liners, reinforced crank stiffening plates, forged valves, uh, pistons, everything like that. So I think to bring all of that together needed some tweaking to, yeah. to make it all work. And now that's all being done. And then a bit of time to take the engine and gearbox alignment because it's, it's a Renault 5 engine with a VW gearbox. Okay. So as many people who've got done this conversion, you've got to get it spot on because if you don't get it right, you're going to be snapping drive shafts so and it causes damage. It gives it a six speed as well, right? Yes, yeah, six speed. So six speed, yeah. so very nice. So Custom manifold. Yeah. Yeah. Manifold sides, um, had to play around with the fuel rail because the injectors I bought were bigger, uh, sort of bigger in size, so we had to adjust all of that. Custom exhaust manifold? Custom exhaust manifold, which has been modified again, just to sort of integrate the wastegate pipes and all in one to come out the bonnet. Nice. I see it's got a uh, sort of micro alternator as well. Yeah, so I've relocated the alternator to the rear of the engine. I'm trying to keep it as minimal as I can up the nice. top here, which is not easy. Nice. Uh, it just gives more space at the front because there's a lot of work going at the front because I've got a electric water pump. Ditch the mechanical water pump, got an electric one, so there's all that pipe work to consider. And then I've got a custom made uh, cooling adapter to go on this cylinder head, nice. which is being machined as we speak. Very nice. So yeah, we're looking, um, we're looking pretty good. Um, also, as we're in the front here, we've got front suspension in now with uh, modified top mounts that we had to modify it afterwards because um, we realised we didn't have enough angle to do the, the camber angle for the front. So these have been modified afterwards. We need to repaint them as well. As well as in the engine bay, we've got brakes, brake reservoir, fuel pressure regulator, fuel lines. So I think, apart from what we're running, what, boost lines? Yeah, so coolant lines. Coolant lines, which is very minimal. Uh, you know, two or three pipes because yeah. there's no heater matrix or anything. Yeah. Uh, doing a recovery tank to keep things simple again in the bay. Boost pipes, already started to modify and nice. custom make those. Uh, vacuum, and then it's electrical really. That's the, the next next big chapter. Perfect. So yeah, not a massive amount to do. We can promise you that it's not gonna take another 18 months to do <laughs> episode four. So um, we're going to move on to, we didn't have any brakes in last time, um, we didn't have suspension either or steering, we did have lower arms in. Um, so let's run through what we've got this side. To make it work we extended the track control arms yep. and the track wood ends yep. and what were they used? Clio 172. Okay. So because everything's wider, so I've got my numbers right because you did ask me this last time. I think it's 1320 is a Renault 5 standard from the width perspective yeah. and now it's 1358. Okay. So because of that extra width uh, for traction and things like that, we've had to change the track rod ends and things like that. Obviously the wishbones are fully adjustable, uh, both front and rear. Um, so pretty much the whole complete front end is customizable. You know, once we get so on the we geometry. Can, yeah, we yeah. Can, meaning we can adjust everything from um, toe to camera to caster, but a lot of adjustments. So um, Bass is going to use this on a drag strip and on a track, so we've got a massive adjustment to run multiple settings. Um, then we're going to move on to, let's move on to drive shafts. Yeah, so they're to be customised, so it's a VW gearbox, as I said, from a Seat Leon Cupra. Clio hubs, so therefore we have to use outer Clio drive shafts, inner VW drive shafts, and then customise it, it's just like a sleeve there. Um, so I think once we've got all the wheels on and everything, we get a sense of you know how the movement is and everything. 
and then ultimately get some uh, custom made ones yeah. for solid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, we're trying to narrow, we made them in house, so we're going to see how they uh, how they get on. Uh, brakes are standard. Pretty much CT turbo spec, you know, as you can see, they're sort of grooved, dimpled. Yeah. EBC, the other stuff, pads. I will at some point, because as I have been doing, looking at other options and stuff, so four port calipers and things, but until I get my wheels and everything, I can work out. Yeah. But I think given how light the car will be, um, and so on, I think it's sufficient because I've upgraded the master cylinder, etc., on the brake servo. So. Nice. See how they get on. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, there we are. So, we didn't see them last time, they're on now. So, moving on to the midsection of the car. Um, before we didn't have seats in, we've got seats in now, um, <laughs> which is always a bonus. Um, we're going to have to chop the seats out because Vas can't get his bum in here. So Covid. I blame Covid. Uh, no, no. Uh, so we're going to sort the seats out. Uh, we've got pretty much everything in here, right? Handbrake. Yep. Clutch. Yep. Brake. Yep. ECU. Yep. Dash. Fuse box. Fuse box. Uh, dashboard switches, steering wheel. Yep. ECU heads up display. Digital coolant, um, which is... Water pump controller. Craig Davis. Is he a singer? Davis Craig. <laughs> Australian company, so. <laughs> uh, uh, and a gear change light. So I think we talked about the quick shift last time. I'm pretty sure, so you guys know about that. Uh, hydraulic handbrake, and so yeah. So I would probably say, what do you say? Eighty percent in it, something like that. Ninety uh, percent, really, because mm. like all it is is the wiring. So th I think that's like I said before. It's sort of the main bit is now the wiring because I've put all the hardware in, which is the main bit. Where do I want it? How do I want it to sit? Um, and where's the best position? So pretty much, yeah, it's now wiring. Nice, left. nice. So yeah, we um, singing along. I reckon. What, 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 what do you reckon? I'm waiting another month. Yeah, a month or two. I, months. I want to be done in two months. I think we'll be rocking and rolling. Five yeah, months. So. Five months. <laughs> Five months. Five months. Get two months, man. Two months. Um, so and also the, we haven't got any doors and the wings aren't painted and the tailgate's not done. So we're gonna get them. We're gonna get them in the body shop in the next couple of weeks and we're gonna get them painted and ready. So exciting times because we well not me we you want to run it. So it's gonna be run before the summer's out. So um, yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting. See what we can do with it. <laughs> Cool, so we are making our way to the back of the car. Um, so in the back we had, I think all we had was the tank in last time. Yeah, just sitting on a piece of wood. <laughs> um, so, so far in the back, uh, we'll probably get some B-rolls to show you a bit more pictures of it. We've got obviously battery, meth. Water meth. Water meth, lovely, with a tank and a pump in the lines. Yep. Fuel cell, which you saw last time, but now everything's connected. Swell pot, lift pump, filters, two pumps. So again, I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah apart, so apart from wiring, I think I think it's there. Every, yeah, I've done the final fitment, so yeah. nothing to be taken off or adjusted. Yeah. It's done, so it's just wiring. So it's all been set up to run uh, pump fuel, but also race fuel. So um, the twin pumps there is once you start using race fuel, etc., you need to pump more fuel in and things. So it's all been set up, you know, the size of the fuel pipes and everything can cope with ethanol um, and the size is to cope with the demand for whatever we put but um, yeah. Are you going to, when, when, when are you using the meth for? When you're running higher, higher boost and higher? It's done a boost, boost mainly uh, because the issue with, the, with such a small engine is the temperatures get going quite high so previously the previous guy used NOS to cool the te internal temps down so I wanted to use water meth uh, which will help the cooling side of things but also help with a bit more power as well. So will that will you run that meth on uh, normal pump gas and when it's on boost? Yeah, when it all the time. So it's just automatic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's controlled by the ECU. Yeah. Um, so I think everything's controlled by the ECU, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, perfect. So before we finish, yep. let's have a quick talk to the viewers about what engine management software you're running. So I've got an adaptronic. Yeah. So obviously the plan is to give the car to EFI parts well known in the Renault 5 in you know scene and stuff and from a tuning perspective do a lot of drag cars nice. um, so gone for that there's a lot more lot of features with for this car but yeah. again future proofs it you know because the idea like you mentioned is the ECU is going to manage everything on this car 
and was using an adaptronic ECU using the same heads up display digital dash. So that um, the digital display is AIM. Okay. So, but it all connects into that. Yeah. Uh, because obviously the car is still going to be road legal. Yeah. So, um, so the dash is specific so that whenever it gets MOT'd, yeah. all the features are on there, etc. And so the last thing we just touched on because it is pretty sick is the steering wheel. Yep. Where's that from? A uh, company called Vol Volantech, I think it is. Volantech. Do you want me to have a look uh, to tell you? Uh, Volantech. Yeah. Volantech? Well, Tech. Volantech, Tech. yeah. Um, came across them, I come across Instagram or some somebody had done it and I like really liked it. Talked to them what I wanted, like the steering wheel that they offered as well at the same time. Uh, got the colour scheme right, carbon fibre back in as well. So yeah, it suits nice. it. it and then I sort of bought, bought the gold screws to, you know, Everything else, go go. everything else, yeah. Nice. So, we won't talk too much more because uh, Pete's more entertaining looking outside. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like what we're doing, subscribe, like, ask us questions. Uh, we're always around at the shop, too. If you want to pop down, grab a burger and chill out. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to do episode four next. Um, thanks for watching, and goodbye from me, and goodbye from the best. Yes, peace.